Hey folks, so here in front of me, I've got my two copper pans, a Falk 20cm uh, saucepan and a Movio 24cm saute pan. Um, but this video is not uh, specifically about these pans, but it's more about my thoughts on copper in general uh, after having spent some time with these pans. Now, firstly, the reality is that 99% 99, 99 of people don't technically need copper. Okay, because well, and and this video is by the way uh, for the general population. It's not for if you're a very professional chef. Um, but the fact is that not really most people don't need copper. And uh, if you look at a professional kitchen, most professional kitchens don't even use copper. So there is really very little reason for you know for the average person cooking at home uh, to get copper. So if you're gonna buy copper, uh, you have to be honest about why you are buying copper and for me well I think for most people uh, there are two reasons first of all you like the look of copper you want as a showpiece that's reason number one and reason number two is you are a cookware enthusiast you um, you know cookware is your hobby like it is for me and you just want a few copper pieces in your cookware collection okay so these in my opinion these are the most genuine and valid and honest reasons on why you should buy copper. Okay, so now we're going to look at a few aspects of copper. Uh, and the first uh, thing I want to talk about is why are copper cookware expensive? Well, again, there are two reasons. Uh, well, the first is that copper as a material is just more expensive. Uh, I don't know the technical reason or the background behind it, but copper as a material itself it's more expensive than things like uh, or materials like aluminium, stainless steel, cast iron. That's reason number one. And reason number two is the historical influence. So copper is seen as a very traditional um, material for cookware. Um, it, it has a level of prestige uh, behind it. It's got a certain level of sentimental value. Uh, so you put these together, that also raises the price um, of copper. So that's the two, re two reasons why copper are expensive. Now, the supposed benefits of copper. So copper, um, you know, cookware companies will sell you on the benefits of copper, and they are true, right? And they are valid benefits. So the copper is the, actually, it's not the most conductive material, but it, it is actually the second most conductive material behind silver. Uh, but silver is, of course, very price prohibitive, so... You know, and copper is very, very close in terms of its conductivity anyway. So first of all, it is very, very conductive, right? It conducts heat very, very fast. Uh, and as, as a result of that, the heating is expected to be very even because of the speed of sp uh, heat conduction. And which also means that it is very responsive uh, to heat changes. But... Okay, so on paper, right, you have these two benefits of copper. But how do you actually take advantage of these benefits? Well, you need a setup, or in other words, you need a stove that can give you that very fast change in heat, right? That step up or step down in heat. If you don't have that, the material is capable of, you know, responding to heat very fast. But you are not able to support it, right? You don't have the equipment in the background to take advantage of that, um, of, of of that of the properties of copper. So, if again, if you're gonna buy copper, then you also have to think about: Am I really getting the best from my copper pans? You know, does my stove, or will my stove able to be able to bring out the best of copper? So that's something to think about as well. Now let's talk about some drawbacks or disadvantages of copper. Well, first of all. Uh, well, we spoke about the price. Uh, so the price, the copper cookware is more expensive. Uh, secondly, uh, this could be a disadvantage, but it is subjective, I guess, is the patina. So this lid is, uh, if I put a close up here, so this lid, I didn't polish it. I haven't polished it yet, so you can see some patina on it. It's not that heavy, but it is definitely there. Uh, whereas I gave the pan a polish, so you can see the difference between the, you know, the pan and the lid. So I put it close, close like that. I think you can see the pan looks a lot shinier than the lid. So copper, um, copper when it's exposed to heat, it patinas very, very easily. 
and I'm talking about even just after one use. So if you want to keep your copper as shiny as possible all the time, you literally have to polish it every time you cook with it. And you know, and some people they just can't be bothered with that um, with that level of maintenance. And well, others like myself, they may actually prefer a little bit of patina. So that could be a disadvantage or could be an advantage depending on how you look at it. Now another disadvantage is that these days copper pans are getting thinner, so it's actually quite hard to find a manufacturer that still manufacture their copper pans in 2.5 millimeter thick or more, right? So Falk, they still, uh, credit to Falk, they still make their pans in 2.5 millimeter thickness. So if you can see, if, now this is a very decent thickness, 2.5 millimeters. Uh, if you can do a close up. And if we look at a Movie L, uh, this I think is M200. Now you can see it is visibly thinner. Um, I don't know if I can put them side by side. Yeah, you can see the difference, right? So the Falk is thicker than the Movie L. Yeah, so most manufacturers these days they are they are trying to cut costs even more VL they pr before they made their copper pans in 2.5 millimeters, but these days they are just making it in 1.5 and 2 millimeter thickness, and that's a little bit disappointing. And lower thickness, of course, translates into lower mass, and lower mass means lower heat retention. All right, so according to just some rough calculations that I did, I have another video where I show that in more detail. So if you get a Movia 1.5 millimeter copper pan, now that pan is not going to retain much more heat than a lightweight nonstick. All right, so it it will respond very fast, uh, but its heat retention is quite poor, right? And that means you can you will either easily steam your food uh, or burn your food. Okay, so the the the, the margin that you have to work with uh, is not very big. And a 2.5 millimeter copper pan is decent, so that will give you roughly about the equivalent heat retention as a three ply or five ply stainless steel pan, but maybe a little bit lower. Okay. Now let's talk about weight. As uh, now I, I I enjoy heavy cookware. The heavy cookware to me means quality, but you know some people they just don't like heavy cookware, and that's fine. Um, and the disadvantage here is that copper cookware can be quite heavy, especially if it's quite thick. Now, if we look at the case of fry pans, uh, I don't have the fry pans here, but a 28 centimeter Falk fry pan in 2.5 millimeter thickness, that's 2.4 kilograms. Now, for for me and for most people, I think that's manageable, although some people will say that's too heavy. But if you look at a 32 centimeter Falk 2.5 millimeter copper pan, now that pan is a whopping 3.7 kilograms, okay? And that is not reasonable for most people. You know, that's something you do at the gym, not at all. Now, another example, which I have here is this 20 centimeter saucepan. Now this saucepan weighs 2.4 kilograms, which, you know, on paper is not that much. So on paper, the weight looks okay, you know, manageable. But for me in person, this pan feels a lot heavier than it is. And the reason is that this is a small pan, so you know my brain, my brain doesn't think that a small pan should be this heavy. So that's why when I pick up this pan, it feels a lot heavier than it actually is. And I find this one actually, um, well, I, I, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, I have to say that is not as enjoyable to um, to use and move around as my Demela Atlantis uh, 20 centimeter saucepan, which is a little bit lighter. I don't have that here. It's, you know, it's with the Mela undergoing a warranty process. Um, but um, but if you're gonna get a pan like this, you have to really think about, do I really want a pan in this size with this weight? Uh, because again, I think most people really have no technical need, um, you know, for, for a copper pan like this. Now, let's talk about a little cooking test with uh, the Moviel. So this one, this Moviel here. Now I have a video in the next section where I actually show the movie in action, um, sauteing some broccoli. But if you can't be bothered watching that, you know that video, which is about four minutes, let me just quickly describe what happened. So now, based on my calculation of heat storage in cookware, I expected this movie out to store more heat than a long, than a nonstick, but a little bit less than a 
five ply stainless steel and about 30% less than a cast iron. Uh, so in other words, I expect it to cook faster. Uh, I expect it to respond fast, uh, respond quickly to heat changes, which is the case with copper. That's you. That's something that you should get with copper. But it also means you can burn things quite easily, and that's really that's kind of what happened in in the in the sorting of the broccoli. So when the broccoli went in, it was able to maintain that sizzling sound for a while before it started to die down. Right, I could hear it dying down, and I had my stove top on about ninety percent of the full setting. Now then I increased the heat, the sizzling sound picked up, and I, and well and my attention drifted off, off away for a bit. And I came back and I found that I actually burned the broccoli on the bottom. Okay, so that means with copper, uh, you need to be more precise with your heat control. The margin that you have to work with uh, is slimmer. Right? So if I compare this with my Demela Proline Seven, which is a very thick 4.8 millimeter stainless steel pan, I'm much less likely to burn my food in uh, in in the Proline than uh, than in this. Copper pan, right? So this, I think, again, I think I'm pretty sure it's a two millimeter pan. If I use the fog 2.5, which I don't have, uh, then because of the increased thickness, the margin I have to work with is a little bit more. So it means that I'm a little bit less likely to either steam my food or burn my food if you had a thicker copper pan. Okay. So now here's the video of me actually sorting the broccoli with about four minutes. Uh, so you can watch that if you like. Okay, so let's see how this pan performs. Um, I'm just gonna uh, saute some broccoli like this, uh, very simple. And uh, now I've got the broccoli up to more or less room temperature because, I, well, that's normally what I do anyway because I don't want to take too much heat away from the pan uh, if the food is very cold. Now this pan here is the Proline 7, 28 centimeters. So this is my go-to pan for general sauteing, right? It's my absolute favorite for general sauteing. It's very, very heavy, has a lot of thermal mass. And when you put food in the pan, it really maintains that sizzling sound very, very well. And that means you've got that Maillard reaction happening and that's going to create the most flavor out of your food. Uh, so we're, and, and let's see if this um, Mobile pan can I'm not expecting it to keep up, but let's say uh, let's see how it um, performs. I'm just gonna turn the heat on. Um, I'm using a slightly lower heat, seven out of nine for this pan, um, just considering that it's copper. And um, yeah, I'll come back when I put the food uh, in the pan and let's see how it holds up. And uh, to be honest, I think I have a bit more broccoli than I really should be putting into this pan, so the pan is going to get a bit overloaded in terms of size, um, but let's see how it performs and it's just warming up. So we'll come back uh, when it's uh, at temperature. Okay, here we go. Uh, now I'm going to increase the heat just by uh, one um, one setting and the garlic goes in first. Yes. All right, now let's see how the pan holds up. Yeah, that's too much broccoli for the size of the pan, but that's okay. Alright. Come on, maintain it, maintain it. Okay. Doesn't seem to be doing too bad. And you can, I can hear it dying down a little bit. And that's actually kind of what I want because I also want to see how fast it responds to an increase in heat. So I might need to increase the heat depending on the sound. So now it, I guess it's half searing, half steaming. Um, I, I can just tell by the sound. But the most important test is what happens when I flip or when I stir the broccoli. Is it going to be able to maintain that sound? Yeah, it's definitely dying down a little bit. Okay. Right, let's see what, what happens if I increase the heat. It smells good. And the sound is getting a little bit more aggressive. So now I've actually got, got, it, got my electric hob at the maximum heat. Now I'll never do this with an empty pan, but if it's got food in it, then I guess it's okay. 
Okay, so the sound is picking up again. Let's see now if I can. And now I'm gonna give it a stir. Let's see. And uh, let's see if we got any browning on this. On this. Okay, so basically I got no brownings. Um, so obviously the edge still goes to the pro line, um, but it's it's doing an okay job. Uh, okay, I'm gonna end this part here. I think this is as good as it's gonna get. Um, yeah, it's okay. Like I mean, I, I did overload the pan by a little bit. So if you have it at a high enough heat setting and um, and don't overload the pan, uh, then it will also do a good job but um, you know just based on this I still definitely prefer to sear especially if I want to create browning uh, with the pro line okay so just to summarize this video then right so what, 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 should, what should you look for what should you look for in a copper pan well so again like I said at the beginning of the video if you want to buy copper be honest with yourself why um, you want to buy copper right Okay, so now you decided, okay, let's say you want to buy copper. Well, the first thing I would say is do not buy the Movio 1.5 millimeter because it is just very poor value for the money that um, that you spend, right? A, a saute pan like this will still cost, I think, for 400, 450 euros. And you're going to get a pan that's very thin. You're going to get a pan that is not able to retain a lot of heat. And you're going to get a pan that does not give you a wide margin to work with in terms of temperature and you're going to get a pan that uh, that is either that will either steam your food or burn your food um, but if you want that perfect sear you it's possible it's possible you just need to be very very precise with your temperature control okay but on the other hand anything above 2.5 millimeters becomes rather unpractical just because of the weight right it's just because since copper is a very dense material, uh, a very small increase in thickness translates to a very large increase in weight, and and you just don't want something that's really that heavy. Okay, there there is a point at which um, there is a point beyond which the weight of the cookware does become unreasonable, right? But then, having said that, I mean these days I don't know I don't even know where you can get a copper pan that's uh, more than two point five millimeters anyway, so I don't really think that's going to be a problem. Now, if you just want the copper look, um, there are pans uh, I don't know what manufacturers, but there are pans that that will there are manufacturers um, that will just put a very thin layer of copper on the outside just to give you that copper look, but they serve no, almost no practical, no technical benefits whatsoever. I would not recommend those types of pans. Um, they're likely to be lower quality pans, but if you just want to look and you just don't want to spend a lot of money, that could be something you can look at. But, they, but again, that's not something that I recommend. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you want copper and you've got a bit of spare money to spend, you're going to buy copper, right? Um, but I think the most important thing is um, well, just be educated about it, um, you know, the benefits, the advantages, the drawbacks, and what you need to have to be able to take advantage of the benefits of copper um, and what, should, what you should look for in a copper pan. And of course, uh, and just be educated about it, um, you know, uh, and I think uh, that's the end of this video. And I will see you in the next one.